Our next guest is calling for stablecoin regulation. Let's bring in Congressman Josh Gottheimer of New Jersey. He co-chairs the Problem Solvers Caucus and the SALT Caucus, and he's a member of the Congressional Blockchain Caucus. And Josh, thanks for being here today. Um, let's just Hi, start Becky. with... Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Let's just start with the drop in cryptocurrencies. I, I mean, I think things got really concerning last week. Obviously, stocks go up, stocks go down, uh, different uh, crypto goes up and goes down. But last week was so concerning because it was such a quick drop and because it seemed to have so many implications for other areas of the markets. It seemed like people had to sell some of their winners in other places to pay for things that maybe they were long on margin. And that's what's causing concern. Where, where is the regulatory perspective at this point? I mean, I think you're exactly right. What was very concerning about last week with Terror and Tether and others was the quick run on the market. And what many of us have been concerned about and, uh, and working, frankly, with, with those in the space, um, you know, innovators and entrepreneurs, is how do we give some more certainty to the marketplace and ensure that when you have a stable coin, it's actually qualified. And that's what my, my legislation I'm working on does. It says it should actually be backed by U.S. dollars or equivalents so you know what's behind your stable coin. And, you know, there, so it prevents runs on the marketplace and that consumers who are in the space don't suddenly find themselves with nothing uh, in, in a matter of seconds. And, and that's, that's been our issue. Our legislation actually says it either can be banked or non-banked, if you want, as a, as a cryptocurrency to define yourself as a stable coin. But to be qualified, you actually have to be backed by one-to-one -one by the U.S. currency. And uh, it also defines the regulator as the OCC. Right now, you know, there's great uncertainty, actually, who oversees the space. It's causing a mass exodus of of companies out of the United States to other countries, or the, they're founding, they're laying, laying ground for their new companies in Bermuda and Bahamas or, or France and not in the United States. We want to make sure that we uh, have this market, that the jobs are here, that the innovation is here. But I think that we, it requires legislation. That's what exactly what we're working on. Josh, which, which of the stable coins actually would qualify under the constraints that you've laid out in this legislation? I mean, it was a surprise to see Tether under so much pressure last week because it was supposed to be the biggest and the most reliable? Well, there are several, as you know, that are actually backed. But part, part of the concern right now um, is that, that it's unclear, even as you know, uh, uh, Tether claims, has claimed that they're actually backed, but it's unclear what they're backed by, how much is by U.S. currency versus uh, an equivalence versus, uh, versus not. So I think that's exactly the kind of requirement we need to put forward. And for people to be qualified and to give people that certainty if they want to be a stable coin, that that's how they're going to define themselves. And, and they're going to actually have to show uh, their investors uh, where those resources are. You know, it, it's crazy right now that you could actually develop a, a stable coin and, and not, not be backed by anything. Um, and then people go into it and suddenly, you know, they, they read these websites. I hear from my constituents all the time about it. They, the website says, don't worry, if there's a problem, it's insured. And then suddenly they have a problem. There's some theft. We know there's been hacking. There's been terror issues. And, and there's literally nothing there uh, to actually protect them. So those are the kind of things we've got to be vigilant on to make sure innovation can happen, protect consumers, but also allow the space to grow and flourish. It's very right. exciting. And uh, we want to make sure we've got, though, we're, we've got the poll position. I, I don't it. understand this. We've had two presidents working, uh, have working group papers on this issue uh, starting back as, as early as December 2020. Why is this taking so long? What is happening? Where, where, where are you? Where I'm, is the FTC? I, 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 where is I'm, the I'm, SEC? I mean, come on. Well, as you know, I don't speak for the SEC or the CFTC. Uh, I've been pushing them to actually come out with some rules of the road here. Right. And the executive action, the president's executive action took steps. But the reason why we're working on this and I'm working with not just Democrats, but Republicans, we've been taking a, a ton of input and hope to put out our, our drop our legislation. The draft is out there. You can find it on my website right now. But when we're going to officially put it out, we've got to pass this thing. And part of what's been very frustrating is, and you know how this is, right, that that people actually don't they're looking for every excuse not to do something. I'm saying is we have no time here. We cannot wait. We need to give this certainty uh, to prevent exactly what happened last week.